Before you cross the street, you better look both ways, or we'll throw you in the pokey for a dozen days. And all around the county, every woman and man knows we'll pull you over just to play our banjo. The Police Accountability Report, brought to you by CopLock.org. CopLock is a decentralized project supported by a diverse group of individuals united by their shared goals of police accountability, education of individual rights, and the dissemination of effective tactics to utilize while filming police. And that's the plan, Joe. Throw you in the can, Joe. From mild Phoenix, Arizona, this is your news for the week. The new year is starting with some controversy in the St. Louis Police Department after a YouTube video appearing to show a police officer beating a man with his baton was posted online. The incident occurred on New Year's Day. The officer appears to push the man on the ground, hit him with his baton seven times, use pepper spray on him, and then handcuff the man and walk in towards the gas station, which contains a police substation. The video had been taken down from YouTube temporarily because the video violated the site's standards for shocking and disgusting content. Later, the video was working again, but only for users who sign in and say they are 18 years or older. A police spokeswoman said the department had not asked YouTube to remove the video. Police said no one had filed a complaint about the incident, and the department first heard about the video once the local media started asking questions. St. Louis police said in a statement, while all of the circumstances of the incident are not known, what is seen on the video is extremely disturbing to us. Force is to be used only when absolutely necessary, and this department takes the use of force very seriously. The department has not identified the officer, but the owner of the gas station said the officer was an off-duty police officer that was there working security. The West Haven Register reports that a Washington, D.C. police officer who allegedly brandished a semi-automatic weapon during a closing time argument with bouncers faces reckless endangerment and other charges. Danny McCullough III allegedly pointed the weapon at the ground as he was being escorted out of the busy local bar at closing time. He initially fled the scene and was chased down by police. He told police officers the gun was his duty weapon and that he had pulled it out because he was afraid he would be jumped. Have you ever wondered how many times the police perform a paramilitary raid on the wrong person? How about when they know the correct person but initiate the raid on the wrong house? Radley Balco has. Radley, along with the Cato Institute, have an interactive map application that tracks, categorizes, and displays many of these incidents. You can search by state, year, and type of incident. The types of incidents tracked range from death of an innocent to raid on an innocent suspect and even unnecessary raids on doctors and sick people. The fully interactive map makes it easy to see which police agencies in your area need to be kept accountable. You can view and use this application by visiting cato.org slash raid map. Radley has recently written a blog post about one of these failed paramilitary raids that happened January 6th in Farmingham, Massachusetts. At 1230 a.m., a police SWAT team launched a raid on the home of Yuri Stamps. The SWAT team was serving a warrant for another individual for drug offenses that was said to have been living in that home. Once inside the home, a member of the SWAT team fired his rifle and killed Mr. Stamps. The police did not recover any firearms in the botched raid, so it is unclear what led up to the death of another innocent. His death is yet another in a long line of innocent people that have been murdered for the failed war on drugs. Police stated that the identity of the unnamed officer will be kept secret until after the internal investigation has been completed. A recent ruling has been made in the California Supreme Court that allows officers to search your cell phone without a warrant. The court stated that there has been a long-standing precedent that allowed police officers to search the belongings of someone that is under arrest. With the ever-rising number of laws in America, you too could find yourself in handcuffs for the slightest offense. Please take time right now to set a password on your phone. It's not a foolproof solution, but if you have been arrested, it will at least require the police to obtain a warrant to read your private text messages. Connect with us at copblock.org slash contributors. Or send us an email at copblock at gmail.com. When you're in our county and you want to drive, just remember to go 55. Because all around the county, every woman and man knows we'll pull you over just to play our banjos.